et nous accueillons David Olivier. Okay, and uh, well, thanks to, to the organizers of the Veggie Pride for inviting me. I'm not uh, perhaps the most uh, uh, competent person to, to speak about the, the subject. Uh, there are other people who have been more closely involved in the recent uh, developments of uh, the, the, the attempt, the, the, the campaigns, the, uh, the effort to make uh, the abolition of meat the call for the abolition of meat into a uh, political demand, into a known political demand. I'll mostly stick to the, the ideas. Uh, I'll also be presenting ideas that perhaps are not shared by everyone uh, among those who have initiated the, the, the call. Um, I think that's one point which is important, is that the idea of the abolition of meat, of the public call, the political call for the abolition of meat, is that of a movement, of creating a movement, and not uh, that of uh, a tight organization with a unified doctrine. So, uh, the presentation, I have it in, in French and in, in English, the, 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 blue, the blue writing. Uh, I might have called it rather the, uh, something like a political demand or making the abolition of meat into a political demand as the title. So what is it about? Uh, to abolish meat means to abolish, uh, to make its consumption illegal. That's what uh, abolishing means. It's not just convincing each and every person to stop eating meat. It's asking for it to become something uh, embedded in law, like uh, the abolition of, of slavery, for instance, wasn't, didn't mean that each person should choose to stop being a slaveholder, but it meant that at one point it was no longer allowed to hold slaves. Uh, when I say meat, of course it includes fish, there's the flesh of all animals, fish and uh, shrimp and lobsters. Uh, the exact uh, limits of that might be a bit unclear because uh, uh, some people say that uh, uh, mollusks such as uh, uh, shellfish clams, for instance, are not sentient beings. Uh, those are things which are not, perhaps not perfectly clear, but I don't think it has to be perfectly clear to make a, to make a movement. Abolishing meat, I think this is an important distinction, does not mean making everyone become vegetarian. Uh, because a vegetarian is someone who chooses not to eat meat in a meat-eating society, uh, to abolish meat means that everyone would stop eating meat, but would not necessarily stop eating meat by choice, would stop eating meat by uh, having it imposed on them. I think this is rather important because uh, vegetarians today are people who do it by... Uh, is something which comes from their belief, and I do not think that one can impose a belief, one cannot force people to believe something, one can force people to stop doing certain acts. I will return to that later. So, uh, the idea is that uh, we should stop calling only for measures such as uh, uh, let's say, a price reduction or uh, a tax on meat or things like that, or encouraging people to stop eating meat individually, which is something that the vegetarian movement has been doing for hundreds of years now, for at least two centuries, calling for people to choose to stop eating meat. But instead, we should say that since eating meat is a political problem, since animals uh, are not, uh, we do not, do not believe that animals are the property of anyone. Uh, we should not accept that it's an option to stop eating meat, but we should simply say uh, it should be a collective social decision to stop eating, to stop raising animals, to stop fishing animals, and to stop, uh, uh, stop that, that great massacre of animals. Now, when we say uh, we want to abolish uh, uh, meat eating, including for people who would prefer to continue eating meat, people start often getting a bit uh, 
uh, angry with us and say that we want to, uh, we, we like, uh, let's say, the Taliban, we want to impose our ideas on people. As I said, it's not imposing ideas, it's imposing acts, which I think is a very uh, important distinction. Uh, they say that it will be tyranny. Well, tyranny usually is defined as uh, uh, something which is not democratic, but if uh, the abolition of meat is imposed by democratic means, by normal political means, it would not be tyrannical. I often get the impression that people think that uh, vegetarians imagine they will impose the abolition of meat by having an army of tanks which will come in and uh, force people like that. I mean, the vegetarians being a, a tiny minority would have some kind of power to do that. Unfortunately, we do not have that power. And the abolition of meat will be through normal political means, which does not necessarily mean something completely democratic. I don't know if the abolition of uh, slavery in the United States can be said to have been democratic since it was done through a war. But anyway, those are the way, that's the way that societies evolve and uh, uh, it would not be anything extraordinary for the society to decide to abolish meat. Uh, it would be um, what, yes, I think I skipped something. Um, it certainly means, yes, it certainly means that democratic, by democratic means, but at least uh, by gathering an important movement in society, within society, by gathering forces to, to have it. I mean, we, it's obvious that we cannot abolish meat while we are 1% of society which uh, the, the desires to do it. So, a bit of history. I'm not at all a specialist, but I think this is really a very... Uh, a very large uh, timeline uh, that I think humans have always questioned. There have always been humans who have questioned the legitimacy of eating animals. I mean, you can find traces in all ancient texts, the, in, in the Bible, it can be found, in, at least in the, the, the Jewish Bible, the, the First Testament, the, the Hebrew Bible. Uh, you can uh, find it in other, uh, um, in other texts, in uh, the there has e even been a state which sometimes is quoted, the state of Azoka. I don't know the reality exactly of that, but where abolishing meat uh, had been ordered, I think, by the king. At least that's what is said. Uh, so the mor morality of eating meat is not, of eating animals is not self evident, but it's something which has been practiced by most humans for thousands of years. There's a vegetarian movement which has been born, uh, I think, something around uh, the same, uh, the, the 18th century, which is the uh, Siècle des Lumières, in, uh, uh, which is uh, the Enlightenment, which means that uh, at the same time where people started being thinking more freely, there was a vegetarian movement which started to, to, be, to have some social reality. Uh, there has been after that, I'm, skipping a lot of years, but in 1975 uh, the concept of speciesism, which was put forward by, by Peter Singer, is he didn't invent the word, but he, 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 he made the first powerful defense of uh, anti-speciesism, and uh, the anal modern animal movement started then and has been going on for some 40 years. Um, in that modern animal movement, I would say that the idea that the consumption of animals must be abolished is something that is quite implicit, that is quite obvious, and I'd say that it's uh, obvious uh, mostly to the opponents of vegetarians, of animal uh, activists, who often uh, say, I mean, they, they get very angry and they jump up at animal activists and they say, you want to force us to stop eating animals, you want us to force us to be vegetarians, you want to impose your diet on us, and that's not right. And often the vegetarians back out and say, uh, no, that's not true, I just want to make you think about it, uh, uh, you're free, uh, as uh, Adriano said, and uh, try to, to, to uh, kind of uh, renege on what they really do believe, which is that no one should eat meat, whether they want to or not. 
even uh, the anti-species, the explicitly anti-species movement in France, uh, which was born around uh, 90, 1990, uh, we published many texts in France, but we never really hit on the idea that we could already today uh, make the, uh, the, the demand for the abolition of meat into a political demand, just like many other demands have, have, have been made into political demands without having an immediate success. For instance, when the um, abolition, when there was a call for the abolition of slavery, uh, it did not have an immediate effect, it did not have immediate success, but it was the start of something. And that to say clearly and explicitly that, yes, we are for better animal welfare, yes, we are for uh, le eating less meat, we are for many things, we are for uh, better slaughter conditions, better uh, slaughterhouse conditions, but fundamentally our, uh, our request is that meat eating should be abolished is something that we hadn't really hit on and is something which actually is possible and will have, I think, an effect on society and is something that all, the, the whole movement which has is existed up to now can, can recognize as its goal. So it was Antoine Comiti at the Estival de la Question Animale in 2005 who put that forward and said that it must, be, it must become an explicit political demand. And from that there was a little group of people who started uh, reflecting on that and they produced uh, a declaration, a minimalist de a statement, which I'll, I will read here, which says, because meat production involves killing the animals that are eating, because their living conditions and slaughter cause them to suffer, because eating animal products isn't necessary, because sentient beings must not be mistreated or killed unnecessarily, farming, fishing and hunting, as well as selling and eating animal products have to be abolished. So that's the resolution in French. Let you read it for those who, who prefer to read French. And I also want to uh, express that each of these clauses is something which everyone can actually recognize. Meat production does involve the killing killing the animals that are eating, that's something that children learn when they are three or four years old. And no one can, uh, can, can deny that. Because their living conditions and slaughter cause them to suffer, that's something that's quite plain for everyone, anyone who seriously looks into the matter. Because eating animal products isn't necessary, that's perhaps a bit more controversial, at least our governments try to keep it controversial, but the facts of the matter are quite plain for everyone who really looks into it with uh, a serious uh, intention to get to the truth, which is that many people uh, already live without eating animal products, and that whatever problems there are, I mean one can say yes you need vitamin B12 and all that, are problems that have quite simple solutions. The next clause, because sentient beings must not be mistreated or killed unnecessarily, that's something which is already law in many countries, which brings us to say, in a, in a sense, that eating meat is already illegal in many countries. Because if you put those four clauses together, it's quite plain that, that people are doing something which implies killing animals, and that something is not necessary. Implies making them suffer and it's not necessary. So the conclusion, farming, fishing and hunting as well as selling and eating animal products have to be abolished. It's something which already follows from uh, the existing laws. So it's a minimalist sta uh, statement, I was saying. I think that's one important point, is that it's a statement that can be recognized by, by many people and that we, that is very strong at a, an argument level. So the reaction of many people is that it's something, perhaps it seems logical, but it's something completely impossible to imagine, really outlawing meat. That you can't outlaw something that people eat. I think that there is a problem with that, is that people think that there is something like a, a particular 
ethical or legal protection to the right of everyone to choose what they eat. Now, what I answer to that is that beating a dog to death just for the fun of it is already forbidden. That people, I mean, is already forbidden in many, in many countries and most people accept that. And that there is no real difference between that and saying I want to uh, I, I want to, to, to raise an animal, have that animal suffer, for instance a pig, for several months in, a, in, a, in, in, in just a shed without ever seeing the light of day and then be brought to the slaughterhouse and killed just because I happen to like, I, I like the, the taste of, of ham. So that's something that people, I mean that's what their, their decision boils down to and it is logically exactly the same thing as beating a dog to death. And perhaps I would prefer to be a dog beaten to death in, in half an hour than a pig having to live through four months of, a, of, of a living in, in the conditions they are put in. So the idea of the, the call for the abolition of meat is to get people who are already part of the animal movement to come out to come out and accept it, to declare publicly that their goal is the abolition of meat and that it is something that can be turned into a political demand. Animal, uh, the animal movement already uh, is implicitly for the abolition of meat. I take the example of the, the slogan of Peter which says animals are not ours to eat to wear and uh, to experiment on. If they're not ours to eat it means that they I mean, being ours is a term of is a legal term in the sense it's pro it's a term of property. They are not our, our property, so we should not have the right. We should not be given the right to eat them. So clearly, Peter and many other organisations are for the abolition of meat, except that they, they declare that in a kind of abstract manner, and then every time they do actions, it is only on the level of. Uh, of, uh, let's say, being against circuses or being against things like that. And that's one point that's interesting, too, is that uh, they, they don't hesitate calling for the abolition of animals in circuses or of um, bullfighting or of even animal experimentation, which, in my mind, is something which is harder to abolish, which is more difficult on the ethical level to, to, to argue, but they call for the, the abolition of that, but they do not call for the abolition of, of meat, and I think that is quite, quite wrong. I would say, as I said uh, before, that the vegetarians are the only ones who do not understand that they are for the abolition of meat. An important point, a difference with what has been done beforehand, is that uh, the abolition of meat is a question we are addressing citizens, is something for citizens to decide upon and not for each individual consumer. I think that in each of us there are different persons. When we are at the supermarket, we're not quite the same person as we are as when we are in the street as a citizen or in the, the voting booth or uh, anyway in, when we are in a position of uh, supporting or not supporting certain ideas as a, as a citizen. Uh, as a consumer, I think it's a, a, a very particular process. We are in a relationship where we are brought to be extremely um, selfish, extremely self-regarding. Uh, the, uh, the position of a consumer is a position, is a relationship between the consumer and the, the seller, the buyer and the seller. There's the buyer, the seller, there's the product, uh, there's uh, the money, uh, there's the pleasure the consumer will have out of that, but what happened before, what is outside of that relationship, is completely out, is completely invisible in that relationship. I think that's something that explains that many people, for instance, are opposed to, uh, are, are opposed to, to what is done to um, the people who make clothes in third world uh, clothes factories, but still buy those clothes. They know full well that that's the, the result of that, but they still buy those clothes. I mean, it seems that there's a real discrepancy between the, the way people act when they are to buy things and when they, um, when they think about them independently. Another thing is that uh, the, uh, 
when, as, as a consumer, even if I refuse to buy meat, I'm in a certain way accepting that the animal is uh, the property of the, the seller. I can refuse to buy his product or I can accept to buy his product. That's a choice I have to make. But uh, it's a choice that is within the, even if I refuse to buy it, the animal has, is still the product of the, the seller. If I refuse to, to buy the meat, I'm taking away the, the seller's incentive to mistreat and kill that animal, but I'm not taking away his right to, to mistreat and kill that animal. I am acting only on, I can only hope that it will prevent, it will lead him to not kill that animal. Uh, so in a way, even if it, I'm not saying that being vegetarian or vegan is not at all effective, but on the symbolic level, it's, it's not effective. On the symbolic level, I think there's something really missing. And if we do not say we are not only consumers, we are also citizens, and it's something that, uh, that the, the treatment of animals is not a question that involves only the seller and buyer, but involves the society as such, then we are missing out a very important part of the, the issue. So the, the treatment of animals is a political question, and that's the, the idea behind the, the fact that we should call for the abolition of, uh, of meat. Now the point is that the idea is that of a movement and not a campaign. Uh, when we started talking about this issue on some uh, forums, particularly in Italy, people answered, but well, and also in the United States, I mean, there was a, a long discussion with Francioli, who kept insisting that it was to be called a campaign. I think that's a frame of mind which is uh, very common in the animal movement, that we should act through campaigns. We have a campaign to do this, a campaign to do that, uh, to, to obtain uh, the, let's say, the... Um, to, to, to obtain a certain kind of law, something that's, that's limited. Uh, a movement is something quite different. A movement means many different people who have many different I ideas, who are very different, uh, who have, have different um, ideologies, but who come together on a cluster of ideas, who come together. Uh, for instance, a good example, I think, is the feminist movement. Within the feminist movement, there were many different uh, trends, uh, there were many different um, philosophical bases, but it's clear that there was something on a sociological level, perhaps one should say, that was the feminist movement. And it's clear that the feminist movement was, uh, for instance, uh, uh, th th there, were common, there were common objectives, for, for instance, they were all against rape, they were all for equality in employment, there were common ideas. In the same way, I think there's, we should make it clear that there's a, a movement for the abolition of meat. That does not mean that everyone has the same ideas within that movement. That does not mean that there's a central organization that's, uh, that, that, that is uh, uh, leading the movement. It just means that clearly there are many people who believe in the abolition of meat and that they are not shy about saying so. So a movement is a social phenomenon. A campaign is the decision of an organization. A campaign also has the picture of something that's outside of society. Uh, a campaign is, for instance, a campaign by Julius Caesar to invade the, uh, France, to invade the Gaul, which is uh, something that comes from outside. It's a military campaign. Often, uh, we as animal uh, activists, we feel that we are outside society. I think we should feel instead that we are inside society. We are part of society and the animal movement is part of society. It's not something coming from outside to try to, 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 to change the minds of, uh, uh, of, uh, of society. Again, we, we don't have uh, an army of tanks. There are no well-defined borders to a movement. Uh, it's clear that some people could be more or less feminist. Some key, even those who were not feminists and today who are not feminists uh, are uh, influenced by feminist ideas, would not dare to say some of the things that uh, men used to say about, about women uh, even just 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, so there's no precise limit to a movement. A movement is a social phenomenon more than 
a precise uh, set of, of people. And within that movement, of course, diversity is welcome. It's a debate for the society of, of, uh, as a whole. Uh, it's not a debate only for vegetarians versus the rest of society. People can be in favor of the abolition of meat while still eating meat themselves, for instance. They, it's not uh, an absolute contradiction. One can say it's too difficult within this society to stop eating meat, but still I understand that it's, uh, it's, it's something that's quite right, in the same way that I may buy uh, clothes made in Bangladesh, but still I, I am in favor of the abolition of that kind of, uh, of making clothes. And there's uh, Antoine Comiti who cites uh, a poll that was made in 2004 by the French agricultural minister, which means that it's not a biased poll in our favor. It's made by the opposition, I'd say, uh, in which 14% uh, of people say that they don't agree with the idea that it's normal for humans to raise animals for their meat. So in a way, we already, without having started the campaign for the abolition of meat, there's already 14% of the population that in a way uh, agrees with it, or at least is open to, 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 the, to the idea. Another point that Antoine makes about that is that uh, um, even those who do not believe that animals, sh that we should prohibit killing animals, but only believe that we should ensure that they have uh, uh, good uh, living conditions, f should be for the abolition of meat. Because when people answer, I g give that answer, say I'm for good living conditions, I'm totally opposed to the way animals are, are raised today, is something that is completely absurd, because if, pe if animals were really raised, were really to be raised in, let's say, acceptable conditions, uh, from the point of view of not having been, not having to suffer too much, having a minimally enjoyable, uh, enjoyable life, uh, it would cost so much that meat virtually would have to be abolished. I mean, you can't produce meat in anything like the quantities it's produced in today while continuing to, while, while ensuring that you have uh, good conditions for, for the animals. So those who are not realistic are those who say that. Those who say meat should be abolished because it's not possible to ensure good living conditions to the animals while eating meat are those who are realists. So I want to return to the idea, that, that the fact that it's not the abolition of ideas, it's the abolition of a practice because you can't impose ideas on people. But on the other hand, uh, eating meat is the most central practice of speciesism. Abolishing species, uh, the, the consumption of meat does not mean abolishing speciesism in the same way that abolishing slavery was not the end of racism. In uh, the United States, it's clear from history that it was not at all the end uh, of racism. But I think it's also clear that it was an essential step to fighting racism. It's the abolition of meat would be have its own importance in itself, even if it wasn't a step to the abolition of speciesism, in the sense that it's, uh, uh, it would mean the end to the suffering of an enormous quantity, enormous amount of animals, but it's also an essential step in fighting speciesism and going further than, uh, than the abolition of meat, because I think there's such a strong link between uh, speciesism and, uh, and meat eating, that, that eating meat in a way is both the result of uh, speciesism and is what upholds speciesism as an act which is a kind of declaration that people make two or three times a day that animals count for nothing more than the taste of their flesh. Now, initially I've been talking about the abolition of meat, something which is often an objection which is often made, is that we speak of the abolition of meat and not the abolition of all animal products and, or, or all animal exploitation. 
I think, uh, first of all, in the course of any process, any historical process which will lead to the abolition of meat on the basis of the points I mentioned, that is that meat means making animals suffering and killing them, it's obvious that the issue of, uh, uh, of the other animal products of milk and uh, eggs will come up too. And that um, the same reasons for abolishing meat will imply that we have to abolish uh, eating, eating milk products, uh, eating milk and eating eggs, or at least uh, maybe there, there could be a few hens in the courtyard laying eggs every once in a while that could be kept and we could eat those eggs, but only if their, their, their welfare is insured. Uh, but for the, the great part of the, the consumption of, of all other animal products will have to be abolished too. So the aim isn't just abolishing meat, but it's abolishing meat and everything that is along the same, the same, the, the same logic. Uh, however, I think that it's important to use the, the phrase uh, the abolition of meat and not say the abolition of meat and all animal products or the abolition of all animal exploitation which in my mind would be even more problematic because uh, I think it's obvious for everyone that eating meat implies killing animals uh, it's something that all children grasp at a certain point that many children reject. They don't want to eat animals, but they don't say, I don't want to eat cheese either. They don't say, I don't want to eat eggs either. And I think that the, the mindset of uh, the public opinion about animals is something that is extremely childish in a way. It's something that uh, has been stopped, has been frozen at the age of uh, six or seven when the children have been first have learned that animals were eaten, that they ate animals, they had the animals in their plates, and then were convinced that it was something that was all right. And I think they have never really thought much further than that. And I think we should, in a way, talk directly to what speaks to them, which is the idea of the abolition of meat. So our slogan should be the abolition of meat. And we Close behind we have the abolition of the other animal products in the debate, but I think it's a tactical, it would be a tactical error to try to make it into something much more, more complicated. People would say, well, you want to abolish uh, uh, eating cheese. For them, that really do would symbolize the idea that we want to impose a diet on them. Whereas I think that what's important is not imposing a diet, and it's Clear, important to be clear that we don't want to impose a diet, that we want to impose, uh, we want to, 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 to stop something, uh, we want to stop the, the way animals are treated. And people don't really understand in, a, in a, an intuitive uh, manner that there's a link between eating cheese, eating milk products and eating eggs, and on the other hand the way the animals are, are treated. An important thing too is that for me the abolition of meat is a very important campaign, a very important movement, is a very important effort we should make to make this into a public, uh, a public um, request, a political demand. But it is not the whole of the animal movement. And beside the call for the abolition of meat, which isn't directly anti-speciesist, it's not at all incompatible with developing the theme of speciesism and uh, attacking speciesism. It's not also, I think that it's not something which is the, the end of the animal movement, even if tomorrow the eating meat and eating other animal problem, uh, products was abolished, I think there, were, there would be other problems. For instance, animal experimentation, which isn't quite as easy to abolish in the sense that I do think that animal experiments serve a purpose, serve a useful purpose, for humans, that is, they are in the interest of humans, at least in many cases, not in all cases, whereas eating animals isn't really so much in the interest of humans. So the arguments against eating meat are not, uh, cannot be carried over quite as easily to, to the, the issue of animal experimentation. There's also the, all the animals 
that are killed not through exploitation, but by uh, our practices, for instance, uh, the, the rats that we poison because they don't want them to come into our houses or to come and eat our, our food stocks, or the animals that are killed when we, w d during the process of, uh, of producing plant food, like in the threshing of, uh, of the fields or the, um, even just digging up the ground that kills, uh, kills worms. And the, the whole issue of uh, wild animals and the suffering of wild animals, which to me is a very important issue, but it remains untouched by the idea of uh, abolishing, um, abolishing meat and abolishing animal agriculture. So there are important and difficult issues that will come after the abolition of meat. There are also a certain number of points which will certainly come up in the debate. I just want to mention them. Uh, that of uh, the Senegalese uh, fisher that is, uh, let's say, I say in Senegal, but not only in Senegal, of course, many people around the world who are poor people and do actually live off fishing, for instance, I believe that they should stop, e uh, stop that activity, find another activity, uh, which also means that uh, we should help them to do that. Um, the issue, for instance, of the Eskimos, the Inuits, who uh, have traditional practices of uh, hunting seals, for instance, I believe that uh, they should uh, also be, be, um, be uh, I mean, we should not be, be shy about telling them that that is not something that is ethical and that they should think about it and abolish that too. The issue of uh, cats and dogs who eat meat, there are solutions for that, but uh, we have to convince people uh, either that uh, uh, cats and dogs should be fed uh, with uh, vegetarian, uh, vegan substitutes, or that uh, they, should be, uh, they should not be kept by people. I think feeding them with vegan substitutes is a very good uh, uh, solution, but some people are uneasy about that, so there are different uh, things that can, arguments uh, that can be used to, to answer that objection. The issue of food sufficiency, which isn't a hard issue at all, because uh, it's quite clear that uh, we have enough food, and we even have more than enough food if we stopped eating animals, and that uh, it's more a problem to justify eating meat on the basis of food sufficiency than to justify its uh, abolition. There's the issue of things like vitamin B12. People don't realize how many supplements they eat already today through the animals, like the fact that vitamin B12 is something they get by eating meat, but the animal got its vitamin B12 from supplements, and so actually uh, taking the supplements directly would not be, be a problem. But that's another argument the, another issue that has to be argued. Uh, people say also that uh, if ca cows are not raised anymore for meat, they will disappear. In my opinion, it's not such a problem, but that's also something that we have to argue about. Uh, some people might prefer to say we will keep cows alive, but not for eating them, just keep them as a kind of pets. Uh, other people, in a kind of contradictory way, but I think that's one of the most stupid arguments that are ever given, say, well, if we don't eat animals, they will overrun us. They, they, will, they, they will breed, and there will be so many of them that we will not be able to, to, to move. Uh, I don't think I have to answer that, but uh, I think we will have to answer that, because it will certainly be put forward. Lastly, the, in, the issue of jobs, that people will lose their jobs, and that's quite true. I think that our attitude to the people who nowadays um, c currently live through raising animals and exploiting animals should be that those people, um, we, we should do what is possible to take care, to, to make sure that they get other jobs and to, uh, to uh, take up their, their problems at a society level and not, let just, not just say, well, you, you just go away and you find, find other jobs. This is because I think that those people are not more uh, guilty than society as a whole for the fact that uh, society eats animals. Uh, lastly, uh, the word about current campaigns. There are a few websites that have been put up. Um, there's uh, the, the, the addresses here. 
la semaine mondiale pour l'abolition de la viande, c'est la uh, uh, World Week for the Abolition of Meat, which has started yesterday, actually, uh, it is right now. Uh, on uh, the 15th of June, there's going to be in France a march for the closure of, um, of slaughterhouses, of all slaughterhouses, and in France, in Paris, Toulouse, Toronto, in uh, Canada, Istanbul, London, uh, Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, and Florence. Uh, maybe there are people here who are more into these uh, campaigns uh, and can say a word about them and give more information about them. Okay, so I finish with a picture of a demonstration. Fermons les abattoirs, let's close the slaughterhouses. And that shows that it's possible to have that in, in the streets and have every and, and do a demonstration which has that request, just as we did a demonstration yesterday uh, for the abolition of all consumption of animals. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>